Howdy, this is Mackenzie Franklin from Side Game LLC here in Colorado Springs, Colorado. It's April 2023, which means it's time for our library update and all the games that came into the library during the month of March 2023. These are the new games, all of the upgrades, as well as anything that we pre-ordered last month. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please make sure that you do. It is the best way to help us grow. And for those of you already subscribed, thank you so much for the continuous support. Let's talk about all the games that entered the Side Game library. Now, starting off, we have all of our new arrivals with 51st state ultimate edition this is another version of 51st state evolving from the master set which is a tableau building game putting all these cards in front of you giving yourself production abilities as well as actions that you can take to change resources into victory points it's got a load of new expansions but the reason this one's so good is the fact that you have the tension constantly there of being able to attack your opponent's cards and that being a very real action you could take and get benefits from so i love how you're trying to manage these different choices of okay do i be as efficient as possible and use each card in sequence and then finally finish with all my conversions and turn my resources into points with my cards but knowing that my opponent can potentially mess up with this means that you're going to be interrupting this flow of min maxing all of these points and resources to making sure you're able to prioritize using certain actions i love that back and forth and i think the two player of this game is amazing so that's 51st state ultimate edition next up we have some new decks for summoner wars these are the shadow elves as well as the wayfarers and the wayfarers are by far the standout here i love how you're going to be summoning units to a board and then moving them around trying to make it to the back end of your opponent's playing area if you're able to get them there you get rewarded with getting these extra recursions from your discard pile getting new units into your hand so you're able to be a little bit more fast and loose with playing your cards moving them around getting them back using them for magic a lot of versatility here and that has to do with that quest mechanism of getting your cards to the enemy side and then being able to cash in those quests i also love that you're able to do a lot of interesting positioning with the wayfarers which means you're able to attack them i played against the Shadow Elves a couple of times, and they seem to be focused more on recurring your cards, playing them back, getting effects for that summoning condition, and it just felt that the Wayfarers had a bit more rewarding gameplay. So that's my recommendation there. It's the Wayfarers for Summoner Wars 2nd Edition. Next up, we have the Champion Pack for Marvel Champions. This is Gambit, the hero pack that came out with Rogue. This just came a little bit later. There was an issue with some of our cards, but we got it finally, and this pack is awesome. I love the way that Gambit is going to be collecting these different car charge counters onto its character, and you can spend them to increase the damage output of your different cards. This means that you can use a lot of different instances of damage and all of them will get the bonuses for example if you play the royal flush that's the signature card here it does zero damage base but it does it three times so you can spend the counters to give yourself a bunch of different instances of damage you can also compare this up with different aggression cards that have separate instances of damage meaning that you're getting a lot of value on these multiple hit cards giving you some ideas to pull out minions for extra bonuses pairs well with other heroes like thor and of course rogue because of the awesome tag team cards and the x-men in general gambit's a great hero and I think it's going to let you explore a lot of your collection. That's the Marvel Champions Hero Pack for Gambit. Next, we have the promo for Bullet. This is the Anne Claire Fourth Wyth expansion. This is just a single character, which means that you're going to get a new heroine as well as a boss. And her gameplay is so awesome because you're going to be able to craft your own pattern cards. The way it works is you have one that's a clear transparent one, and then the other one is the back of the pattern card, and you'll stack them on top of each other to create a unique pattern. This is so much fun because you have so much control and the flexibility in your options, but it does take a little bit more time because you're having to actually think through what you're going to be playing. Because of the time limit, I don't think it's actually that big of a deal. You're going to have time to actually think about where you're putting these cards, and I think that control is well worth the extra time put into planning. So that is the new promo for and Claire Forthwith for Bullet. Up next is the Kickstarter delivery of Final Girls Series 2, and what a delivery this was. Did a whole video on the channel talking about my ranking of the different Final Girl boxes, the feature films, and all of the Season 2 content ranked super highly on the top there. I love the new content, worlds, the mechanisms that were explored, and it bumped my entire rating of the whole system up into a 9 out of 10. So I love the entire system of this one. Can't recommend this one more for that solo play system. And if you're interested in my thoughts on which are the best, go take a look at that video on the channel. It's the ranked of all of the different feature film boxes. That's Final Girl Series 2. You gotta check that one out. Next up, we have a new expansion pack for Spires and Hildegard. This is the Crows and Crawdads. It's another set of cards that's going to add some variability and new storytelling as there is a crow motif through Hildegard. If you've played it a couple of times, this is a great addition. I love these small packs, but I'm not going to get into any of the content because no spoilers here. So that's the Crows and Crawdads expansion for Spires and Hildegard. Next, we have Fuse Countdown, a new expansion, standalone expansion for Fuse, and it is awesome. It's just more Fuse, something that you're going to enjoy with new split dice, multiple colors, but it 
does great change in how you're punished for taking too long or not being able to match the different dice onto your own cards. In the original, you just simply lost dice, which gave you a sense of lack of progression, but I thought that it was some good pressure to make good decisions and actually communicate, but this one makes it so that if you can't place a die, you take a penalty card instead, which just gives you additional objectives you must complete by the end of the game. I like that this is a cool twist on a penalty mechanism where you're not punished, you're never regressing on the things that you've already done, but you're getting new things that you have to put out instead. So I like that a lot. I think it makes sense, and you have all of these new little puzzles with the different cards, one that you need to check out, particularly like real-time games. I think this is one of the best because you're always making decisions throughout it, small little decisions, and it forces that communication. So that's Fuse Countdown. Next up, we have Seven Wonders Edifice, a new expansion for the second edition of Seven Wonders that takes some of the first edition's babble, just the great works. The way it works is you're going to be taking out three cards, one for each age, and then putting some pieces on them, and if you ever construct a wonder, you can pay an additional money cost in order to gain a special ability if it gets completed. All of the pieces get removed from it. If it does not get completed, then anybody that didn't help gains a negative. I like this simple edition that's going to liven up your games a little bit and allow you to have something else that you're running towards and increases the importance of money because of those additional benefits from it. I also enjoy the different wonders that are added to this extremely simple expansion to add to your games, and I think it's one that anybody can pick up and start playing with. So that is Seven Wonders Edifice. Next up, we have Pictures Xmas. If you're unfamiliar with pictures, it's a game where you have manipulatives of some sort, maybe rocks or cubes, that you're trying to communicate information to give clues. And the Xmas version here gives you two new manipulatives, one that leans into the sense of touch, and that's got to be the coolest thing in this expansion. Not only does it have different pictures regarding Christmas, but you also have this bag with all sorts of different manipulatives, and you'll put them into the bag, and then you you pass the bag to the people and they're going to reach inside and feel what's in the bag and then based on their sense of touch and understanding what you put in there they're going to have to come up with a picture that matches one of the clues it's such a cool experience and i think it makes sense leaning into the different senses and i hope that they continue to do this with future pictures expansions so that is the pictures xmas expansion next we have Natureopolis. this was sent to us by the publisher button shy games for review purposes did a whole video on the channel on why i think the sprawlopolis series as a whole is excellent and this is no different Natureopolis gives you two new things that you're managing. You have tents that are going to make your different scoring conditions more interesting because they're placed on different parts of the road since you're trying to overlap them and put them in different ways. And you also have an additional thing that you're managing, the streams that are essentially a different type of road that you're going to have to manage. And then pairing that with the different scoring criteria, it's a great evolution for the Opolis series that is Natureopolis. Next up, we have the expansions for Vindication, Chronicles, and Villages and Hamlets. Now, both of these expansions are the best expansions that they've released so far. I think that they allow you to explore more aspects of the game, but they are a bit double-edged. Now, for example, Vindication Expansion Chronicles here is going to give you a narrative experience by giving you a player sheet, something like D&D, where you're going to be marking off boxes, checking things off as you gain different experience by exploring different specific areas. For example, if you get trades, fight monsters, you'll be able to tick boxes off, and they can give you additional point scoring options and special abilities. Now, in addition to this, there's also event cards that are going to add points of interest to the board, and they're going to be things that you explore and interact with, maybe adding pick up and deliver, giving stress to different aspects of the game that generally get ignored, and I love that about this. The only thing that hinders this is the gameplay is slowed down by the addition of story beats, because you're going to have to think to yourself, okay, I got to do this thing, I got to read this card, we got to wait while this person resolves their story, and so it can slow down that experience and that quick gameplay that's in the addition, the original Vindication. So that's something to be aware of. If you don't like story in your games, do not get this one. However, on the flip side, you also have the Hamlets and Village expansion. And this one is basically going to add a whole bunch of new space so that you can play with more of your Vindication content. Not necessarily more expansions, but more of your modular tiles. So you're going to open up the map by giving way more areas. You have these hamlets and villages that are going to have multiple tiles on them. So when you visit one of those areas, you can visit any of the different city sections in there. It adds to the different scoring with the area control, as you can now get bonuses for controlling these villages or hamlets. And then it also gives a bigger importance to movement as you get some bonuses for exploring this island that's sort of off to the side of the map. So I think that this is a cool expansion that just gives you more of the vindication you already like and allows you to play with more of your content at a time. So this is my favorite out of the two expansions. I think the Villages and Hamlets is just more of that core experience, but I do think that Chronicles has something interesting to offer with that storytelling. So that is the two expansions for Vindication, Chronicles and Villages and Hamlets. Next up we have Tapestry Expansion Fantasies and Futures. Got to play a lot of this this last couple of weeks, and this includes 
includes new fantasy and futuristic races. You're going to have new cards that allow you to actually play cards in this five income area. You might have a card that says, hey, take one of these houses, put it in your five area, and then during your final income phase of the game, you're going to be able to use that and place it on your board somewhere. So it gives you some future planning. In addition, some of the requirements for the technologies are going to interact with that as well. Having that as a requirement, you have to interact with that phase five future action. And then some tapestry cards are going to give you bonuses for playing them right away or for playing your next tapestry card. So it gives you some planning and thought, but it still has some of those same things that the original tapestry has, where some stuff is just clearly better than others. And so I'm waiting for the update patch where they give you the fixed civilizations because we've played a couple of games with a couple of factions that just were clearly amazing at specific player counts. Uh, there was one in a two player game where it was like a 150 point lap because of just how efficient it was as getting early resources and passive points. And then on the flip side, one that pretty much did nothing for the entire game and was easily manipulated by the other players. So I think the first one was the Illuminati was just ridiculous in a two player game. And then the other one was the Genies, which was pretty dang terrible at all player counts because of the way that the opponents were able to control what scoring you had to do and how it forced you to focus on a variety of scoring instead of focusing super specifically on one and getting a ridiculous amount of points with that. So still got the same issues that I have with the original Tapestry, but a lot of fun still. I enjoy Tapestry a lot. That is the Tapestry Fantasies and Futures expansion. Next up, we have the Gloomhaven Envelope X. I won't get into too much detail on this because it is a spoiler heavy thing if you actually open it, but I honestly recommend that you just go get it even if you don't have or haven't unlocked Envelope X because it's pretty dang cool. Uh, go check it out. You can do more research on, on it if you want, but they have the physical printed components for Envelope X, so that might give you a hint as to what's inside of that envelope. So that's something to be aware of. I do recommend you go grab it if you enjoy Gloomhaven. It's a pretty dang cool reward. So it's the Envelope X for Gloomhaven. Next up, we have Meadow Downstream Expansion. This adds a new board to the game, which is a huge table hog, just to be aware. Not a big deal for me, but I think that's something that some people will care about. It kind of doubles the space that the game takes because you have to have this huge giant board but what it does is it adds new options with an entire new area that you can collect cards from. These are going to give you new ways to get symbols that you may have had trouble getting before, and it also gives you this new track that instead of getting points for playing cards, you get to move on this track, which is going to give you additional bonuses, getting to draw new cards, getting to take additional extra effects, and I love that this gives you more options for what you're actually doing with your cards instead of just scoring points for them. So it becomes more than just, okay, I need to play this one that's got big points, or I need to play this one that's going to lead me to this card that has big points, it gives you some more options, and I think that's pretty dang awesome. So that is the Meadow Downstream expansion. Next up, we have the three expansions for Ares Expedition. These are Discovery, Foundations, and Crisis. Now, Discovery is one of the better ones, in my opinion. This is just going to give you more of what you like from the original Terraforming Mars, giving you goals as well as milestones and upgradable action cards. I love this because now you have these customizable options for your cards, which are going to give you new things that you can chase for, new strategies to develop. One of my favorites is one of the green cards allows you to play a second green card during the phase, which means you're able to build out that engine and go through that strategy if that's something you enjoy. I love the different choices present with the upgraded phase cards, but they're not so powerful that it's something that you have to do, so it's an option that you can decide to invest in. Love that. Another one that I love is the Crisis expansion. This is going to give you a new cooperative and solo mode to play, and it's so cool because you start with the planet fully terraformed, and then the planet is starting to suffer all of these consequences. It seems pretty terrible, but it gives you options to mitigate the these failures and these different cascading failures. So it's awesome that you're able to get those choices on what of these different crises you're going to manage. I love the way that it works for solo, for the two player modes. I haven't played it in the higher player counts, but at those two, I do think this is a winner and it's one of my preferred ways to play Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition. Next up, we have Monikers. And Monikers is a game that we've been playing for a long time. It has you trying to give clues to have your team guess the names of people. But we've been constructing our own games of Monikers, either by having people write down words onto pieces of paper or by using things like Cards Against Humanity cards, existing games that we just repurpose the cards for. So I thought that it was about time that we got a copy of the official Monikers box. Now, the reason that this box is so awesome is the cards not only give you the name of the person you're trying to describe, but some have art accompanying them, or they'll have an entire blurb that gives you so much information about this person to help get the conversation started and help you start explaining who this person is. I love this concept, and I think that it works really well, and the layout and design of the Monikers cards is perfect to facilitate this discussion and also makes it age appropriate for everyone, whereas the Cards Against Humanity cards may not be the best choice for certain groups. So that is monikers here for the side game library. Happy to have it here. Next up is Poetry for Neanderthals, where you're going to
to be doing something similar to monikers, getting your team to guess specific words or phrases. Now, the twist here is that you have to speak in only single syllable words. For example, it is thing that drop from sky. That would be rain or something like that. And if you ever say something that is not a single syllable, the person with the nose stick on the other team is going to be the judge and a wax you to show you that, oh, that was not one syllable. You put your card in the negative one point pile and you move on to the next one. I think this is a really smart way to do this because it's thematic, fun, and engaging, but it's also going to give someone the responsibility of being the judge so everyone else can focus on the game. I love that. There's also something really smart done with the cards here where you can push your luck on the clues that you're giving because if you look here, we have a card that says pie and then pie crust. If you get pie, if you get them to say pie, you say yes, and you can just score that point or you can push your luck and go further and try to get your team to guess the larger word, pie crust. And this means that you're going to have to change what you're saying, your sentence. It's so cool and I think it's really well done and I think that makes this game stand out as one of my new favorite party games. That is poetry for Neanderthals. Next up, we have Crokinole Imperium and oh my gosh, what a strange but successful expansion for a game I thought did not need an expansion. This is Crokinole, the flicking game where you're trying to get the disc into the center to score points. The board is always changing but Crokinole Imperium adds these special cards, either special ability cards that you can use or cards that affect the entire game state. For example, the swamp here says when a disc lands in the 20 hole, so in the center, you remove all the other discs from the board. That scores 20 points if it was a valid shot. This is insane because if you have these events happen, you can have gigantic point swings, but this is going to change the way that scoring is actually done, where even if you completely destroy the opponent, get like a million points to their zero, then you're only going to score one point for that bout, and it's a race to five points, basically. I love the way this is going to change the way that you approach your shots. It's going to give these crazy moments like this in the game, and it's super interesting as you go through all of these excited for what's going to come next, but you can always go back and play Crokinole if you're not feeling something ridiculous and off the wall. So a really cool expansion and the cards that we got for these are a nice uh, PVC stock so that way everything is going to be super durable. Reminds me of the Chip Theory Games treatment. This is a great product. Check it out. That is Crokinole Imperium. And our last new arrival is The Legacy of You. This is a solo game that I've been having a lot of fun with. This is from Garfield Games in their legendary line. This includes things like Hadrian's Wall and Raiders of Scythia, but this has you playing as you as you're constructing these canals at the Yellow River and trying to repel barbarians that are trying to stop you from completing your tasks. So it's all about rerouting that water and constructing these canals and you're doing it in a race against this wave that's eventually going to surge and take you out. So you're juggling all of these different loss conditions and doing so with these multi-use cards, as you can discard them for instant resources, slide them under your board for additional income based on the number of huts that you've cleared, as well as remove them permanently for a double resource of some sort. You're going to try to push this win condition, trying to construct the entire canal while making sure that that wave doesn't catch up or you're taken over by barbarians. Now, this includes a legacy system to the game, which means that every time you complete one of these yellow turtle shells, you're going to something in this book that's going to give you new additional abilities, effects, or sometimes detriments, like additional barbarians or terrible things. I'm not going to get into too many spoilers, but there will be some light spoilers here as I give you my final thoughts, where this game has a lot of interesting gameplay in the first two thirds, in my opinion, where in the first third, you're doing a lot of story, lots of new things are happening, new cards are getting introduced, the gameplay is constantly changing, and then when you lose, you're also going to gain new abilities that are going to give you more functionality for your multi-use cards. Now, once you've done this for a while, you get into that final third where you just stop unlocking new things. You're going to be doing the same repetitive motions it feels like and the gameplay feels very similar as when you do win, generally you're just going to be adding cards to that barbarian deck or adding new conditions that you must fulfill, but because you've got those abilities from those losses as well as just running through the campaign like normal, you're at this point where you can take pretty much anything that the game's going to throw to you and it's going to give you that same form of experience. So I love that first two-thirds portion of the game, but I'm not sure how often I'm going to return to it for that last third and I'm not sure if I'm going to actually even play that last third. I might reset it once I get to that stagnant point once I start feeling it's not as fun and then just go back from the beginning because I do enjoy that first two thirds so much. So that is Legacy of You. Moving on to our next section we have all of the upgrades for the library starting off with the Gloomhaven Metal Coin upgrades. Now keep in mind if you are playing Frosthaven you will not need these at all because you don't actually use coin tokens in that game. You use the loot bags instead. But if you're playing Jaws of the Lion or the original Gloomhaven these 
these will be great. Or even if you're playing Founders of Gloomhaven, you can use that one for this. Now do keep in mind these coins, some of them do not actually have art printed on the backs, particularly the ones, but everything else does have that awesome artwork. So that's something to be aware of if you're going to be picking these up. So those are the metal coins for Gloomhaven. Next, we have my favorite set of coins to come out recently. These are the metal doubloon coins for Libertalia, the Winds of Galecrest, put out by Stonemeyer Games. I use these on a lot of games like Terra Mystica as well as Guards of Atlantis 2. I love the denominations, the fact that there's no names plastered on everything. They're pretty generic coins, but they're hefty, they feel great, and they're in excellent denominations. So that is the metal doubloon coins for Libertalia. I think we picked up three sets of these this past month. Next is the Summoner Wars second edition playmat. This game is played entirely with cards, and your cards are your units, so you're putting them out on the board, moving them around, manipulating them. So this seems like a no-brainer for the system, and it works perfectly. I'm surprised we didn't have this sooner. That's the mat for Summoner Wars second edition. After that, we have the Archive of the Ancients for Vindication. This is a giant new storage system for Vindication that takes everything from the different expansions, puts them into appropriate areas, and I think it does its job beautifully. The way it works is you'll have these different consoles for the specific players, so everything is managed well there, and then you'll have all of your miniatures in one section, your boxes for Hamlets, Chronicles, as well as the tiles themselves, so like your every game box in its own separate area, and then two giant boxes for the cards, one that's going to be for every game, and then one that's specifically for some of the expansions. So I love the modularity of this, and it's all organized cleanly, nicely, and doesn't even fit an entire calyx. So I like that. There's still room in your calyx to fit two more games, so it works perfectly. That is the Vindication Archive of the Ancients. We've also got some new upgrades for Dune Imperium. These are the Dreadnoughts for Rise of Ix. We had a little awkward you know, wooden pieces for those while everything else was upgraded from the upgrade pack. So these have added some new Dreadnoughts, and that way everything is matching in its quality. So we've got miniatures now instead of those wooden cubes and those wooden little Dreadnoughts. So that is the Dune Imperium Rise of Ix Dreadnought Upgrade Pack. And lastly, we have the Western Legends Big Box. Now for this one, I didn't actually order the big box. I find that I don't enjoy these wooden inserts as much because a lot of times they're not organized to actually get gameplay started or facilitate gameplay. So I find it pretty frustrating when I assemble one of these things and it just doesn't do the job. And I think that I could have done a better job myself. And that's usually what ends up happening. So I just have totally sworn off these wooden inserts usually. But I did go ahead and go for these promos. So that's just the goodies, a new character, some new items, as well as a wooden traveling trader. That way it matches the rest of our wooden sets. So that's everything for Western Legends, the big box. And that brings us to our last section. We have all of the pre-orders, starting off with all of our Kickstarters. We have Sale. Now, this is a cooperative trick-taking game that is beautiful, put out by All Play, used to be board game tables, but it looks like a great option, a small time frame, but it's a two-player trick-taking game that's something different than what the crew brought us. Looking forward to trying this one. That is Sale. Lovely artwork. Next up is Scholars of the South Tigris. Next in the South Tigris series from Garfield Games. And I've had so much fun with Wayfarers of the South Tigris, particularly in the competitive setting. And Scholars looks like a great evolution of this dice mechanism and these dice manipulation. It has you translating texts and researching throughout all of these different sciences. It sounds right up my alley with the theming, but it also looks to be very mechanically sound as well. Now, that being said, it does also boast to have a great intuitive solo mode. So hopefully that's something that does deliver because I did find the solo of Wayfarers lacking. So holding strong, I hope that Scholars of the South Tigris does not disappoint. Next up is the Townsfolk Tussle, Foul Neighbors, and Odd Jobs. Now this promises to offer some new terrain, new bosses, new characters, as well as entire new ways to play the entire system. And that's something that I'm extremely excited for. Now Townsfolk Tussle is one that I unfortunately rated pretty low as it was a pretty big disappointment with the way that it was paced, as well as the entire early stages of the gameplay not being very interesting and not giving you lots of choices but this looks to add an entire new campaign mode that's supposed to get you on the ground running right away, adding new ruffians, adding new townsfolk that you can play as. I'm looking forward to this one, and I hope that it has the cool thematic creativity that was in the original with the boss design. I'm looking forward to trying out and seeing what they add with the Foul Neighbors and the Odd Jobs expansion. So that is Townsfolk Tussle. They also added some pretty cool new metal coins. Next up, we have Unmatched Adventures, and this is definitely the crowdfunding project I'm the most excited for. It takes the Unmatched series, which is my favorite head-to-head -head skirmish game, and now you're able to use your cards and all your existing content to play against a AI opponent in a cooperative setting. This is awesome. They're taking the unmatched system and making new ground, and hopefully it is something awesome that's going to get more expansions in the future and just give me a new way to play a game I already love. And even if the cooperative game doesn't go very well, at least you'll have an entire set of four heroes that you can use in your competitive matches. We have Dr. Jill Trent, Annie Christmas, Nikola Tesla, and then the Golden Bat. So looking forward to trying all of these different characters, and the Kickstarter adds some additional miniatures instead of
instead of those small tokens. We saw something similar with the Jeff Goldblum miniature for the T-Rex expansion. So that is the Unmatched Adventures Tales to Amaze. And our last crowdfunding project is the Elder Scrolls Betrayal of the Second Era. This is a Chip Theory Games production that's an evolution from two of their different games. You have the leveling up and progression of Too Many Bones, put with the map management and movement of things like Cloudspire. I'm looking forward to this one because you have an existing IP with all of this lore and backstory that's being put into a game system that I already know I enjoy. So I'm hoping that they're able to meld these different ideas. I know they're simplifying the characters a little bit for this, but they're adding a shorter campaign that you're able to work through. I'm looking forward to it and hoping it doesn't disappoint. That is the Elder Scrolls Betrayal of the Second Era. And our last pre-order here just snuck in this morning right before filming this video. This is Age of Innovation from Capstone Games. This is a Terra Mystica game. Think something like a Gaia project where they're evolving the system, bringing out a new map, an entire set of new characters. This is basically if you enjoy Terra Mystica or Gaia Project, this is a whole brand new expansion, but it's a standalone game. I imagine they're going to evolve some mechanisms, make some changes, but more Gaia Project and Terra Mystica. I'm thrilled. I'm excited to try everything about this. It looks like they've adopted some of the tech tracks, the cults. I'm just looking forward to learning more about this game and when it arrives, playing so much of it. It's got the solo mode included in the box as well, so I'm looking forward to trying this one. That is Age of Innovation, a new Terra Mystica game. And that's it. Those are all the games that entered the library during the month of March. I'm curious to hear what you thought about my opinions on these games. What games were your favorite that entered our library last month? And what games entered your own personal collections last month? I'm curious to hear what games I need to take a look at during the month of April and what things need to enter the side game library. But thank you so much for watching Side Game Strong.